So I finally watched the second series of Unsolved, the BBC true crime documentary, and I'm struggling to decide whether I liked it more or less than the first series. So the first series was called The Man With No Alibi. It was about Omar, who was, who is currently in prison for a murder that he maintains he did not commit. And Bruno Munro took on that case and looked into it and, you know, tried to find out the truth. The second one has a similar theme in that there is a potential murder and Bruno Munro goes to the Isle of Wight to investigate the disappearance of Damien Nettles several decades ago. And he disappeared when he was 16, I believe. And there's no real evidence of, you know, where he could have gone or what happened. There's no body. And she talks to his family and people who knew him at the time. And there is a suspect. There are obviously rumours that he was murdered and when somebody is missing for that long you do kind of assume that that's the case although it's not always the case and whether that's the case here or not I'm not going to spoil it for you but I will talk a little bit at the end um, a few spoiler thoughts so I will forewarn you towards them. There is a suspect who is actually no longer alive and died quite a long time ago which makes it very difficult because if they are guilty of doing something heinous they can't be convicted of it now and you can't talk to them about it but there are some of that person's associates who are still alive and Brona interviews them. So the story itself is quite an interesting one because it's backed up by some CCTV footage inside a fish shop. Where this becomes suspicious is because Damien was clearly off his head on something, drugs, when he went to the fish shop. There is CCTV in the fish and chip shop that we see in the F in the series and he is just not with it. So something has gone wrong and that's why everybody kind of thinks that it's drug related. Either he's been hurt or murdered or kidnapped or whatever by somebody, um, I apologise if you heard my phone vibrating there, by somebody who involved in the drugs trade, maybe his dealer, we don't know. And straight away, that makes me less sympathetic. I'm not saying I have no sympathy with Damien Nettles or his family or his friends, of course I do, but when somebody has gone missing and there's some illegal activity behind their personality, that makes it less sympathetic. If you have it on a wider scale, if a heroin addict who lives on the street with no friends and family around goes missing. You struggle to have sympathy for that person when compared to, say, a young child goes missing. It's just the way our minds work. And I have to say, this is quite a frustrating case because so many things seem to point to the same thing, this one suspect. And so many people through hearsay, are saying they believe this suspect did it or they heard that this suspect did this and did that. And yet the police are still, or at least at the time of recording, were still viewing this as a misper case and not as a murder case or a potential murder. And that's horrific. The fact that there are all these aspects pointing to this being a murder or manslaughter or somewhere in between the two, and the police have only ever considered it to be a missing person, is gross misconduct as far as I consider it. And I can't imagine what the Nettles family must feel like about that. That's absolutely horrific. So it's very frustrating. What also is frustrating is that I don't particularly like Brona Munro's attitude in this. For the most part, she's fine. But a few times and specifically ones where she is in Brixton I won't spoil the exact moment for you um she seems to forget that she's not a police officer and that she's actually a journalist and that she hasn't got the power to stop people in their tracks and demand that they talk to them granted the police can't exactly demand that you talk to them but she seems to forget that and she loses respect for somebody who is not even guilty. She goes to, I'll, I'll try not to spoil it, but she goes to talk to somebody who knew the suspect. 
um, Nikki McNamara is the suspect and she goes to see somebody who was one of his associates at the time and she's really very aggressive towards him. She stands in front of his bike so he can't move. She shouts after him down the street, which is going to be humiliating and embarrassing. And yes, she needs answers for the family, but that's not how you treat somebody who has ostensibly not done anything wrong. That's, I just thought that was a despicable thing for her to do. And it's people like that that give journalists a bad name. But for the most part, as I said, she was fine. But sometimes I think she got a bit too big for her boots. So is this worth watching? Absolutely, yes, it's worth watching. Spoilers from now. Okay, where is he? I... The fact that there was a witness to a potential burning of a body or something, I completely just believe that that was what that was. Obviously, it's really frustrating that that witness never came forward sooner or went to the police straight away. But you don't want to get involved with that kind of thing. And can you imagine what they'd do to that witness if they found out that he was the one who squealed? That's not going to be a happy life for that person's family. So I kind of understand why, but... It's just frustrating and I think at this stage I doubt the family will get answered because I do not believe his body is able to be found now. I believe he's either long gone in the water, um, I'm not sure if they searched the water extensively, it wasn't really touched upon, um, but I believe his body would have either been in the water or burned in that fire, I don't believe he is just buried somewhere. But I hope, I hope I'm wrong, I really hope I'm wrong. In an ideal world, he just fled the island to get away from the trouble and is living on the mainland. Um, but I feel like he would have got in touch with his family by now if that had been the case. I wish nothing but the best for his family. I hope they get the answers they need because that is obviously going to be the worst thing and I can't even imagine what it feels like for them. But I imagine the not knowing is almost as bad is what's actually happened or what most people are assuming has happened it's it's tough it's an interesting watch the fact that there's no real conclusion the fact that Monroe oversteps the mark several times um and the fact that there are various leads that were never followed up on they're all very frustrating aspects of this but i would say give it a watch it's not great that some of the episodes are only like 15 minutes long i'm not really sure what the purpose of that was or why they didn't just make it a big long documentary or maybe a two-parter. But for the most part, The Boy Who Disappeared is an interesting watch. It's a fascinating watch. I wouldn't say it's enjoyable in the entertainment sense. But I definitely think it's worth it.